Awesome. All right. So today we're going to be going over satire, but before we do that, um, just an FYI, if you still owe me work, make sure to turn it in. Uh, the primary review, I'm, I'm on top of grading them, so you guys have some pretty low grades. You might want to go back and redo them. Uh, and Monday, we're going to review it when we do grammar. So drama, there's two types. What are they? Tragedy and comedy. Beautiful tragedy and comedy. I know Miss Jordan was going to come through. Okay, tragedy, comedy. All right, what are the forms of speech in a drama? Yeah, we have mono, which is one, right? One person talking to everybody else. Dialogue, which is two or more, right? Soliloquy. Yeah. So, okay, Miss Garcia always misspells this, but something. Right, that's when you're talking to yourself, right? And then what's the other one? Deadpool does it all the time. You're right, but it's a specific word that nobody knows. <laughs> Aside. <laughs> yeah, or we call it breaking the fourth wall, right? So yeah. Aside. Okay, we got our ironies. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, situational. Situational, as I wasn't expecting that. Uh, I know it, something you don't know. Uh, I know something you don't know. Dramatic. Dramatic. It's when the audience knows something, but the, the characters don't, right? So. This is really common when we watch horror films, right? We're like, stupid, don't go in there, right? There's a monster in the thing. The murderer's in there. What are you doing, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then we have a last one that you guys are kings and queens of because it's when you say something you don't really mean. Sarcasm. sarcasm is a form of it, but not all of it is sarcasm. So, verbal. Remember, all. Verbal irony is when you say something that you don't mean, but it doesn't necessarily all have to be sarcasm, but sarcasm, all sarcasm is verbal irony, right? Ms. Garcia loves verbal irony, and I use it all the time. Suspense. There's three types. What are they? Good, bad. Well, okay, so remember there's the, the one of them is where we know something's up, but we're not quite sure what's up. So you're thinking about it, you're trying to guess it. Anticipating. Anticipating. Mystery. Mystery. Okay. Then we have the other one where Miss Garcia watched a movie with her sister and threw the laptop at her. Because I got scared. So now she sits far away from me whenever we watch scary movies. What's another word for scary movies? Uh, horror. Horror. Horrific. And then there's the last one where all the girls love it. Romantic. Romantic. Comedy. Romantic comedy. A rom com. <laughs> yeah, so romantic and comedy. Okay. Now remember when it comes to these suspenses, these two, mystery and rom and comedy, once it happens, we don't really ever feel that suspense again. We're like, we know they're gonna, what's going to happen. Now, horrific is the only one that can actually intensify. Because now you know what's coming and you start to expect it and you start to get that feeling again. Okay. Any questions on that? All right. Also, if you haven't turned in the archetype um, project, you need to do it. Please remember that you're supposed to represent all 12 archetypes and explain it. And don't be making up art, your own archetypes, please. Um, I had some pretty interesting ones. Me and Coach Johnson were like, are there new archetypes you didn't know about? So, just make sure to follow that. So today, huh? Are you gonna be here after school today? Yes. Yes. I remember my, my tutorings are Tuesday, th Wednesday, Thursday. Okay. Uh, today we're gonna to get an understanding of satires and its many forms. Um, and to review background for the drama we're gonna be reading, which is Dystopia, the Hungry, the Hunger Maze Games of Divergent Death, and to demonstrate comprehension of satire by identifying satire and memes. And so uh, you are going to have a discussion board. And again, it's due on Friday by 11.59 p.m. That drama is like three movies mixed in the room. Oh, it's all kinds of them. Dystopia, mm -hmm. Hunger Maze. Yes. So it's like Hunger Games and Maze Runner. And mm -hmm. then it's got Divergent. Yeah. What is 
<laughs> that would be good. But... <laughs> so, <laughs> so satire, it's ironic, it's ridiculous, and it's simply funny. Miss Garcia loves satire. Um, because it is a very serious, like, like it's a joke, but you kind of gotta get it. It's a smart type of joke. Like so, yeah, very dry humor. British humor is really common with it. I was gonna make a joke that I wouldn't understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very witty, right? And it's kind of like sarcasm, right? Like people don't get it unless they know, like they're kind of aware of things. So sometimes it's lost on people. Mr. Tucker is very good at making like satirical jokes. Okay, the one that's over here. And it even goes over teacher's heads sometimes, okay? So as we recall, there's two types of drama. There's a drama, there's tragedy and a comedy. And I'm all down for tragedies because you know, everyone needs a good cry every once in a while. Even though Miss Garcia hates crying, but that's probably what she looks like when she cries. But my favorites are comedies because I love to laugh, right? And I especially like witty humor. I like smart humor. I'm not real big on the like low level comedies. Those are good for a couple of laughs. But if I have to think about it, then it goes, ah, I get it now. That makes me laugh a lot more. So when it comes to satire, it also makes like reference to things that are going on in the real world. So this is a person we know. Do you know who he is? I don't watch him. I watch the other two. Yeah, ah. Stephen Colbert, That's Trevor That's Noah, weird. those types of guys. They do satirical shows because they're making commentary on society. And so that's a key part of satire. So let's find out exactly what it's like. Now, I'm gonna do this for, as an easy 100. All you gotta, there's no questions or anything in it, but if you go put your name and join and look through the slides, I'll give you 100. Okay, easy 100, sound good? Yes. Huh. Okay, so um, for you, we'll check out. Okay. So, all right. So today we're going to actually learn what satire is, and it's going to provide important information and background on the dystopia uh, comedy. Last year they really liked it. I hope you guys like it this year too. Okay. So satire. According to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, satire is a literary work holding up a hu holding up a human vice and folly to ridicule and scorn. You know what a folly is? Like a bad trait, right? So my folly is I really like food, right? I like food. Oh, I thought it was gonna be like an inner trait, like sarcasm. Oh, I really like that too, right? Um, and sometimes I can be mean with my sarcasm. So that would definitely be a folly. And a vice is definitely, vices are your bad habits as well, okay? Is a vice like a thing that you yeah. use to like Professor. squeeze something down? <laughs> so, it sounds fancy, but what it really means is just a form of comedy that uses humor to make fun of something and to show the weaknesses of someone or something, right? So a lot of times we look at this as political stuff because they make fun of politics because a lot of times it's ridiculous. And then a lot of times you also see it to make fun of society because we do some weird stuff, right? So. British people eating tomatoes <laughs> for breakfast. Tomatoes are delicious, Garen. Don't make like me fight apple. you, Garen. Not when you eat them like an apple. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I'm going to show you some of the ways we see satire in the real world. So we see them in cartoons, whether it's political or not. So this one says, caution children playing. But in reality, uh -huh. you need to be cautious because they're paying attention uh -huh. to their phones and stuff, Funny right? and relatable. Uh -huh. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. And a lot of times you can sit there and go, oh, I do that, right? So, OK. And then study habits, right? Here is China, here's India, who are excelling at math and science as well. And then here's the United States, right? This he's is gonna, a lot of y'all this year. This year is this, yes. Okay. So um, so th that's what it's saying. Study habits. Do Americans study? We have a lot of really smart Americans, right? They're you guys are pretty good students. But in general, this is how the world sees you. So it's satirical. It's holding up our folly, our vices. We like tech. We like to just listen to music. We like to just chill out versus, you know, um, China and India. I'll tell you a story about a, a student from China. So I went to UT and I studied Chinese literature. So I had a lot of Chinese students in my classes. And they would talk about when they got to the United States, the study habits of America was mind-blowing to them. 
they would sit there and sit there, they'd be like, well, they asked me to go to the movie, but I had homework. And I couldn't go anywhere until I finished my homework. And then the Americans were like, just do it later, right? Like it's not due to like whenever. And so they were always freaked out about our study habits. They're like, how do you guys pass classes? Or even the idea of extracurriculars. You know what those are? Yeah, band. Band, football, Sports. art, all those. They're like, you guys do that during the school? And I'm like, yeah. It's called right? like extracurricular. Yeah, extracurricular. And they're like, for real? <laughs> so it was very strange to them. So that's satirical. A lot of times these come out in political uh, cartoons. So let's look at the video. I'm not allowed to watch this show. Uh, yes, okay. <laughs> Hopefully it works. Oh, there's no sound. Why is there no sound? Nice. Why is there no sound? Oh, I know why, because I turned it down. <laughs> I want Miss Garcia to like act <laughs> out, to act it out like so, Chad. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. Any pause for that? Yeah. Because you know, if I can get in a good video, I'm going to get in a good video. Okay. All right. <laughs> Voice acting career. <laughs> I need that extra money. I'm poor. Okay. So. Well, hello, YouTube. How's your little experiment going? This is horrible. Three girls I don't care about make me cry in the background. <laughs> um, hey, you guys, I bet you Lowe's Griffin doesn't make the craft which is an important thing in high school right now. Yeah, everyone who's, anyone is running track in her high school right now. Yeah, and I bet she also doesn't live on the south side of town, which is suddenly important. I hate your north side face. <laughs> okay, so do you see, do you see how that's satirical? Yeah. Right, they're making fun of the fact that she doesn't live on the south side. No, she has to live on the south side, right? I thought it was going to be that people make fun of you for anything. And pretty much anything, right? <laughs> like, track is important right now, yeah. right? It wasn't important before, but it's important right now. And like he even says, three people I don't even care about. Yeah. They're hurting her, her self-esteem, right? And they just chose a side of town that was important. And since we discussed it, I'm not going to make you answer this question. Uh, so, I don't know. I tried. Probably because y'all had me in my feelings when y'all talked about what type of teacher I was. Anyways, that, <laughs> I had some people say I was an authoritarian and I was like, absolutely not. So well, know. maybe in this class, <gasps> I don't know you're what you're like. Teenager. No, I meant you're not like that in this class, oh. but you're probably like that towards the end of the day because you're like, why did I become a teacher? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm telling you, sometimes at the end of the day, I'm like, I should, I could have been an engineer. Yeah. Um, okay, other types of satire. <laughs> movies. These, right? The interview. Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen is, is Rogen huge is on satire. Uh, he, the same thing with James Franco. And then your scary movies. Back in the day, there used to be something called Lampoons or the air, Airplane. Those were really funny. But anything that really mocks them, right? So the scary movie actually was a satire because it was making fun of all the scary movie series, right? And how many times do they do things and you're like, I always wondered about that, right? Why is it that they always trip when they're running, right? No, it's like, do you want to yeah. watch a scary movie? Just hang up the phone. Yeah, like, that's the murder house. Let's go check it out, right? Absolutely not, right? Ms. Garcia has always told her friends, if we are ever anywhere and they go, it's a, a haunted area or whatever, and they go off by themselves. I will haunt three times. They do not come back. I will come back in the morning with reinforcements because somebody has to live to tell the tale and I would be the first one have to you, do that. Have you seen that Geico commercial where it's like, guys, we should go hide in yes, that shed full of chainsaw. That is a satirical no, commercial. No, we should go hide right? in the graveyard. <laughs> yes. like, that is very what satirical. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so even the killer was like, really? Yeah. Like, we should get in a running car. No. So what? this is the movie Idiocracy. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen it. Um, and just listen to the things they're saying, okay? So 
The premise of this movie is they put him to sleep. Him and a woman to sleep for, it's not supposed to be so far in the future, it's just supposed to put him to sleep for a little bit. But then they wake up and the United States is like crazy because all, all the smart people stopped having kids. Oh, God. But all the dumb people kept procreating. And so the United States is suffering right now and they're having a food shortage and you're about to find out why. Because all the people, I don't know. What the hell is this? Why'd you eat it? It's amazing. They're crocodile stuff? They're watering pumps with a sports drink? Rondo, the first mutilator, had come to replace water virtually everywhere. Water, the basic component of all life, had been deemed a threat to Rondo's profit margin. The solution came during the budget crisis of 2330, when the Brondo Corporation simply bought the FDA and the FCC, enabling them to say, do, and sell anything they wanted. Joe didn't know any of this, but he did see a problem that he might actually be able to solve. With his options running out, Joe took a bold step. He would not get out of the way. This time, he would leave. For the last time, I'm pretty sure what's killing the crops is this Rondo stuff. The Rondo's got what's playing straight. It's got electrolytes. So wait a minute. What you're saying is that you want us to put water on the crops? Yes. Water. Like out the toilet? Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be out of the toilet, but yeah, that's the idea. But Rondo's got what plants pray. It's got electrolytes. <sighs> okay, look. The plants aren't growing. So I'm pretty sure that the Rondo's not working. Now, I'm no botanist, but I do know that if you put water on plants, they grow. Oh, well, I've never seen no plants grow out of no toilet. Yeah, that's good. You sure you ain't the smartest guy in the world? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, look, you want to solve this problem. I want to get my garden, so why don't we just try it, okay? And not worry about what plants crave. Rondo's got what plants crave. Yeah, it's got electrolytes. What are electrolytes? Do you even know? It's what they use to make Rondo. Yeah, but why do they use them to make Rondo? Because Rondo get electrolytes. <laughs> <laughs> After several hours, Joe finally gave up on logic and reason and simply told the cabinet that he could talk to plants and that they wanted water. He made believers out of everyone. Joe didn't know it, but the beloved electrolytes were salts that had been building up in the topsoil over the decades. So see, so what is it? Why, why is it satirical? What is it making fun of? Well, it's making fun of the fact that a company can literally buy out anything, right? And convince people that Gatorade is what the plants want. And then it's also making fun of government, right? They, they, none of them were smart. <clears throat> none of them could answer the questions that he had. And he's just an average guy, right? And so that's why it's satirical. It's making fun of the United States and the way it's going. So hopefully there's no Brando in our future. Relatable. Yes. Right? yes, it's very relatable. Okay, here's satire also in the real world TV shows. One of the most popular ones, especially in the United States, is Saturday Night Live. Now, granted, I know most of you probably don't watch that, but it used to be really, really big. And so it makes fun, pokes fun at society. Also shows like The Daily Show, where a lot of people actually get their news because they are good news sources, but they use it, they combine news with satire to make fun of it and make social commentary, which makes it more interesting than your normal news, right? So you have like your daily shows, um, you have um, the Stephen Colbert reports, those types of things. Mad TV is also considered a uh, satirical. It was longer than SNL, I think. Like, yeah. Longer ago. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's at least heard of this. Huh? Yeah. Mad TV is like, this one was funny because this was very relatable to my life, so pay close attention. Okay, so why is that one satirical? Why is that so satirical of my own life? Because you cheated you like in high school. I don't know. Yeah. They're basically saying that high schoolers just copy anything off the internet and just turn it in. They turn it in, and not only that, 
Do you, you guys think that teachers have never seen stuff like that before? Yeah. Right? So I teach ES, I used to teach ESL, right? So I'm like, my students had zero to very little English skills. And one day I get this paper and it's the most perfect English. It's like college level English. And it has perfect quotations and everything. And I'm like, I don't think this is this girl's paper, right? So I go and I look at the internet, right? Because I read everything all right. And I'm looking at the internet and I find it. <clears throat> it's right there. And then it's talking about this man named Stanley and this and that. And I'm like, Stanley? And I was like, I don't think she knows a Stanley, right? This girl's from Puerto Rico, just got here. I don't know many Stanleys in Puerto Rico, right? I don't even know that many Stanleys. And so I'm asking her and she swore left and right that it was hers, even after I showed her evidence, right? So that's the tear for it. He had the evidence. He knew the email was there. He calls, he can see them and they still think that they can get one over on him. So that is very much a satirical commentary on students. I think it's just funny that they had all those actors in there. Yeah. They're like from the, well, I'm pretty sure they came from SNL. Yeah, they did. All of those, Seth Meyer came from SNL. All those, all those people that you see in those funny movies, they tend to come, they came from SNL. Now here's my favorite type of satire outside of movies is satirical books, boom, right? So two of the most famous ones are Caps 22, which is about the military. And you're gonna see a point of it in a minute. And then there's Animal Farm. And a lot of you, I don't know if you've read Animal Farm, but it's basically about these animals that rise up and overthrow the farmer. And then it's basically a satire of Russia, okay? Now, Cox 22, just the premise, because you're about to see a clip of it. There is this man named Yossarian who's trying to get out of the military because it's during World War II. And he's, he doesn't want to die, so he wants to get out. So he wants to prove that he's crazy. And he keeps doing things to try to prove that he's crazy. He even shows up to drill one day completely naked. But his commanding officer wants to look good and doesn't want somebody crazy. So he thinks, oh, he must be so smart. So he promotes him. So every time Yosarian keeps trying to get out of the military, he keeps getting promoted. And so um, there's an issue. But Catch-22 is going to be explained. And it gets a little confusing, so you need to kind of pay close attention to what it's saying because it goes fast. Why are you getting promoted so much? You won't have to get on the front lines. And I'll tell you a funny fact about the doctor after it. So what is the catch 22? I don't know. I was kind of like. Okay. So catch 22 is this in the military at the time. You'd have to be crazy to want to continue to fly combat missions, right? Because there's a high chance you're going to die. Oh, yeah. Right? So that, that makes you crazy. But if you go to ask or tell them, hey, I'm crazy. I shouldn't be flying anymore. 
then that's an indication that you're actually not crazy because crazy people don't know they're crazy. So therefore, the minute you ask, well, then you're sane enough to fly. That's the catch-22, right? And so what it is, is the whole book is about these catch-22s in the military. For example, the doctor that he's talking to hates flying. So what, but it, it mandates that he has to go on so many flights. So he kind of pays this guy to put his name on the flight logs. Well, one day, the plane that he's supposedly on crashes <laughs> and kills everybody. So even though he's standing right there in front of the general and everything, they're like, no, Dr. So-and-so died in such and such plane. And he's like, but I'm right here. And they're like, we don't know who you are. So-and-so died. It's in, the, it's in the thing. So they even sent his wife benefits. He can't leave the camp because he no longer exists, even though he's right there. <laughs> and so it's like oh, this crazy series of events, right? And it turns out that Orr is not so crazy or is acting crazy so that they don't realize he's trying to escape and he actually escapes the military. So it's actually a really funny book. Um, and there's all kinds of crazy stuff that goes on with it. So you guys get where satire is kind of going? Yeah. All right, beautiful. Okay, so can you think of anything satirical outside of these? Hint, hint, you guys have an assignment with it? Uh, no? I'm sure I can. I can. Memes. Um, Memes are satirical, which is why to, for your assignment, I just want you to go out and find a meme that is satirical or something. You're going to post it in the discussion board and just explain it, okay? Now, why are we learning about satire? Because this whole um, drama is over these, move, these types of movies and they're satirical, right? And I like it because he's hilarious, okay? So basically the first thing it's satirical about is dystopian worlds and books, movies, and shows. So you got The Hunger Games, Maze Runner, Divergent, and The Walking Dead, right? I used to be a huge fan of The Walking Dead until they killed off Glenn and I just couldn't do it. But anyways, so it makes fun of this type of genre. Do you guys know what dystopian means? Like, um, not apocalypse, but like, crazy people it's, it's basically like an apocalypse yeah. it's after it like, it's normally after like everything falls apart like all your yeah. government and everything falls apart so those are dystopian worlds okay and you're going to hear more about dystopias because we're going to talk a lot about them reality tv <laughs> now some of you may not have seen some of these but they're especially the shows where people have to survive and are being watched as they survive for entertainment so this is a huge one right naked and afraid mm -hmm. All right, Miss Garcia would never be on that show because uh, no, spiders can't do it. Survivor, another one I wouldn't be on, right? I'm pretty sure that show, I'm pretty sure all of them are. Wait, whatever. what's that? Yeah, they're, they're older ones, but these, like these ones. And Practical Jokers is funny. Oh is where God. they pull pranks on people, right? Yeah. And we watch it. Well, just specifically themselves. There's just one show where like you have a partner and you do missions together and they're like, like near death, kind of. Yeah. Like, yeah, kind of like those, yeah. Um, and like Punk was started by Ashton Cooker or Astra Kutcher. Kutcher. Um, and basically what he, he would do is he would prank his celebrity friends. Yeah. Right? So like one time, you know who Justin Timberlake is? Obviously. Okay. So one time they go and they use um, Ozzy Osbourne's daughter, right? Kelly. Yeah, Kelly Osbourne to, to make it seem like everything he has is getting repossessed, right? So they're literally clearing out his house and he's like freaking out. Like he's like, oh my God, oh my God. And he starts panicking and he's calling everybody and then it's all prank, right? So that's kind of what he would do is he would set them up on purpose, right? And so it used to be really popular, but it's basically entertainment TV that's based off of real life. Okay, some more important information, just so you know, and it's gonna make sense when we start reading it, okay? These all, we would consider purples, right? Ms. Garcia considers them purple, right? That looks more like a dark pink. Okay, that one's more of a pink, yes. But the rest of them, if my sister were to come and ask me, I'd say those are purple, and she would yell at me because Ms. Garcia's youngest sister is in, as a fashion major. Mm -hmm. Right, and she she's the type that will show me ten different pictures that all look exactly the same, and she's like, no, the filter is different, and didn't you notice this hair is like right there? And I'm like, what? <laughs> so she's the same way with colors, right? I'm like, it's purple, it's red, it's blue, blah. No, 
There's magenta, purple, mauve, and lavender. And I swear it's gonna make sense when we start reading, okay? So just remember that. This is Paisley, okay? Because in reality, the characters in the, the play, they're all colors. But then there's a Paisley one. And you're supposed to be grouped by color. And he's like, well, but I'm Paisley, right? <laughs> so, so Paisley is actually a pattern and not a color. So just remember that when they talk about Paisley. And then uh, I definitely want you to keep in mind the archetypes, right? Um, because we are going to be kind of trying to identify them as we go. So are there any questions for any of that? No. Does satire make sense? Yes. yes. OK, perfect. OK, so that's the end of the lesson. You just need to go ahead and go to do your meme. Ask any questions if you have it. And then again, and I gave you an example of what it looks like, as always. Yeah, with Kim Jong-un. Yes. Oh my god. So all right, <laughs> with explanations. And so this is my meme. With this technology, we will bring the United States to its knees. And then I explain it. This meme is satirical because it highlights how we view North Korea as a threat and how Kim Jong-un believes he is a powerful leader. In reality, North Korea utilizes outdated tech. Do you even know what that is? <laughs> a floppy disk. Yeah, like, yeah, it's one of those the, the disks that we used to save everything to, right? Oh and so, uh, outdated technology is not as powerful as they think. This is, this is demonstrated by the fact that Kim is holding a floppy disk in his hand, which is an old way of storing information and is extremely outdated. Okay, um, so that's basically what you're going to do. Again, it's due by Friday. Uh, Friday. Make sure it's appropriate, please. I don't have to explain to any parents as to why their kids are seeing these crazy memes that are not appropriate. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. And if you ever want to see a really good satire that I think is really funny, you would look up Monty Python. Oh, Monty Python. And the Holy, and the the, Holy Grail. The quest for the Holy Grail. Miss Garcia would laugh every day, all day. Okay, any questions? All right. So you are free to work on that. <laughs>